Man, the 90s. Such a wild time to be a gamer. Developers experimenting, trying new things, throwing ideas at the whiteboard, trying to find out what would stick. A time of great innovation and experimentation, some of our favorite series of all time stem from the 90s. Not to say there are quite a few stinkers that tried to mate a cat and didn't succeed, but Armor Core by now sports 15 entries across multiple systems. Primarily used to be a PlayStation friendly franchise, but later on it released games on other platforms including the Xbox brand. Full disclosure, when Armor Core was getting its Feet wet, I was a Sega boy. I used to jam on this. This is Cyber Troopers Virtual On, a much more arcadey mecha fighting game that used to be very, very prominent in Japanese and American arcade back in the day and eventually ended up releasing quite a few games itself. A very, very different genre. But as they say, if you cannot get Mohammed to the mountain, get the mountain to Mohammed. I couldn't play Mats Armor Core back in the day because I didn't have a PlayStation, so I played what was available. Time flies though, and almost 30 years later, we're getting a new modernized Armored Core game. This very channel that you're watching right now was created in order to support content about Armor Core 6, among certain other things. My main channel has about 13,000 subscribers by the time of this recording, but my demographic isn't really digging this kind of thing. So, this vid is the first of a series detailing my journey into getting reacquainted with AC. Hope you like it, I will be narrating all my shenanigans and letting you know how I understand the game with an outsider's perspective, so if you are veterans who've been following the series this entire time, please feel free to leave any constructive feedback you like in the comments below. Let's get to it! So since getting back into such a historic and lengthy franchise can be hit or miss and your impressions might be tainted by making a really bad choice, I did some homework. I joined a couple of Armored Core fans groups, joined the Discord server where some very lovely people, you know who you are if you're watching this, helped me decide. Most of the suggestions I got were pointing me towards Armor Court for answer. It's kind of an expansion-ish game added after Armored Core 4 for the PlayStation 3 and it is considered to be one of the most controversial for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, Armor Court 4 made huge changes to the gameplay introducing Quick boosting, a mechanic that allows the mecha to move and stray faster in order to accelerate the pace of combat. It was a very drastic choice and not all veterans of the series appreciated it, but my thought on this is that they were going for the newer systems back in the time, they wanted to create something that felt more modern and fast paced, so that's why they opted for this mechanic. It's not that strange if you consider the date of this release. It came out in 2008, that was before Demon's Souls came out and took the world by storm. Well, by storm is a so-so statement because initially the game was misunderstood by pretty much everyone and then it started developing a cult following that led to the company becoming huge and a staple of the action genre throughout the following years. So back then, they were testing stuff, saw what worked, discarded what didn't, and don't forget guys, if you think that this feels strange by today's standards, you should maybe play some Ninja Blade and see what fun really is like. You did not come here for a history lesson though, you came to see how it's like to be reacquainted with this series in 2023 played by a person who knows absolutely nothing about how the games have evolved. So 
what I learned from interacting with all these fine people is that you should be using regular B controls because it's the only scheme that makes sense in this day and age. You can fire with L1, R1 and the rest of the buttons are kinda intuitively placed so you will have an easier time switching weapons and flying and boosting and all that good stuff. If you have a custom controller it can work wonders for armor core so don't pass those up. So now we're ready for some armored coring. You get the tutorial straight away about walking, flying, shows you how to boost around with the new mechanic, how to use over boost that gets you from point A to point B in a straight line fast, and of course the much advertised assault armor, which is really dope, interesting stuff. When you start your first mission, you're introduced to this exposition dump, it's pretty much we destroyed the world, people live in satellite cities, some poor fucks are left on the surface of the planet and they're fighting for resources, and then it's on to mission one. Okay, so stay away from the enemy, get a red lock, traverse by flying around, spam those attacks. I have to tell you guys, my thoughts mostly gravitate towards the how do you modernize this without making the veterans feel excluded and out of touch because this is i wouldn't say exactly clanky but you have to be very very deliberate and from what i've been learning from people you also have to treat each weapon in a very specific fashion the weapons that can be spammed should be spammed if you want to use something more precise like a sniper rifle you have to pace your shots wait for opportunities and all that okay those are done almost perfect well well shit. okay didn't do that bad i felt like a slag but i made it so it's fading to black extremely slowing now like extremely an s I'll take it! Okay, so apparently the game includes this ranking system that you have to fight from 30 to 1. It's called the Collar Rank for some reason. You can also pick your arena, as you see right here. I'll try them all out. I'll start with the old Peace City. Good thing we have emulated this, so loading times are pretty much non-existent. So let's see how I do and, well, how I do it. Where's this guy? Oh, there he is. Ooh, fast. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I misconfigured something because I went into the Gran Turismo menus of the game and I applied a lot of stabilizers. I don't know exactly what they do. And now I feel like I'm moving like a damn tortoise here dude like like a dog from elden ring where is this guy okay at least you have a map on the top right so even if you totally lose sight of them you can see the red dot and be like yeah there's the guy i seem to be doing okay though they're losing armor integrity or hp or whatever it is okay airborne now i picked the energy based ac I also have a rocket launcher. Later I got in touch with a veteran player who told me that it is very common for ACs played by the AI to have high energy resistance. So I'm only clipping them. I don't think this rust bucket has high energy resistance, but whatever. Okay, okay. Now he's standing kind of still. Wish I had an energy blade or something. Come on, dude. I'm pretty sure I'm hitting him. He doesn't lose any health. Okay, now he's losing health. I'm losing health as well. We're like slugging it out. <laughs> like noobs that I am. Okay, there it is. Finish. I win. Awesome. Okay, that wasn't very bad. Let's try our hand on the next. Ouch. Ouch. Okay. Oh, uh, God damn it, man. What the hell? I'm doing so. Oh, shit. Shit, I'm doing something very, very wrong here. So apparently what I came to realize is that my very, very deliberate style of playing like Souls-likes and all those precise games 
is not working with the kind of loadout I have. I'm using like a laser rifle and that kind of energy salvo. And those are supposed to be spammed, so you have to stay mobile, try to keep enemies in your sights, and just spam away until they are dead before you are dead. And I gotta tell you, it kind of becomes a fireworks fest if you're using flashy shit that you are supposed to fire over and over again. The hardest part of this is keeping the enemy in your sights and have situational and area awareness. There is a mechanic called quick strafing that allows you to reorient left or right really fast by tapping a direction and then quick boost. But dude, that's never explained. I had to go into Fora and find it out. It makes a huge difference and here my implementation is not perfect, but it's better than nothing I suppose because after a fucking tries, this person is burning inside their own cockpit. Okay, I think that's enough for the time being when it comes to placement matches. I need to get some more guns. I need to upgrade my slag, my armor slag. Let's play another mission and... Uh, okay, this is kind of different because now we're in exclosed spaces. And um, I think this design is pretty legit. Starts the game with a very open mission on that... Oops. My bad. On a bridge where you can see horizons and understand that you have maneuverability and then it's in closed spaces and you have to learn to fight indoors. Okay, okay. I dig this. Let's get these suckers out of the way. Most of the stuff I have to do at this point is move from point A to point B and destroy all the stuff that's in my way. So just a little bit of boost strafing here and throwing the occasional rocket in there. Okay. Okay, okay. So far so good. As soon as you get a lock, you don't even have to move or reorient yourself or anything like that. Auto aiming will do that for you. Have to thank one of the people in the Discord server that I joined that let me know over inputting in this game will get you killed thank you very very much my man so you see all the blips on the map but the map in the game does this really strange thing of zooming in and out so now it seems like my targets are very far away because they're tiny but if i move a few meters then they seem to be in my face so you might have a false sense of security from time to time and you realize that that's not two kilometers that's 20 meters in front of you around the corner and you have to backtrack a lock in this mission i don't understand why they went with this decision your opening missions in a game are like your chance to make a statement about your level design if you just have people backtrack to kill the bots that spawn on the back of where you came from yeah, not really stellar. Break another door. And break another door. And shoot a couple of thingies. Okay. I also don't know if this energy field salvo I'm firing does any collateral damage. I just fire it. The initial target takes damage, but apart from that, I'm not quite sure. I have to track all the way back to the start of the mission. And there is an AC here, and strange thing is, I lost my left arm weapon because it ran out of ammo, and it was auto purge because that's in my option, so you drop down the empty gun, and now for some reason I don't even have a reticule, maybe the reticule was tied to that weapon, I'm firing blind here hoping for the battle, oh, it's dead, okay, okay, fine, so guys, this is the first episode of my shenanigans in the world of armored core, for answer let me know if you like this leave any constructive criticism in the comment section below if you like this kind of thing i will be back with more because that's what the channel will be all about so if that's your jam sub like hit the notification bell and until next time stay shiny shiny like chrome fire out.